of the best people ever. I mean, just it's amazing. <laughs> Quick shout out to Andy Miantis and Chris Rodriguez for both working out of town and can't join us. Um, so, uh, if you saw, first of all, I should say Joe Iconis, who's sitting right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna embarrass him right now. Uh, we did the Jonathan Larson Project 12 times, and he saw 10 of those performances. Um, and if you saw the show on the first performance on October 9th, you probably saw Break Out the Booze first and then one of these days. Um, and I like to say that Joe was the unofficial show doctor because after the first night, he said, Do you think they should be in the other order? And we had this whole dramaturgical conversation about it. And I was like, We're out of town in Boston in 1965 with a new musical. This is so great. Um, and we did. We worked on the show throughout the week in, in different little ways. It was the best week ever. We ate a lot of steak tartare at 54 Below. Um, as I was listening to these songs, I also had the privilege of meeting with a lot of Jonathan Larson's friends and family and talking to them. And honestly, a lot of the stuff that I discovered at the library that actually, you know, you would never see in the Jonathan Larson Project informed so much of it. Um, there were diaries and, you know, notepads full of ideas that he didn't end up writing and all kinds of things. Um, but one of the most interesting things that kept coming back is that so many people said um, if Jonathan had lived, his next show would have been incredibly political. Um, that was something that came up over and over again. And so much of the material that I discovered at the library that was the most exciting was The Truth is a Lie and the song you're about to hear. Um, some, like songs that were so political and that I think pointed towards La Vie Bohème and things in Rent that were very political. Um, but it was fascinating to me to kind of learn how he was commenting on what was going on during his time and of course how it's reflective of our time. Um, so the next song is gonna be sung by George Salazar. It's Iron Man. Um, was a reaction uh, to the Exxon Valdez oil spill that Jonathan wrote, and who was writing songs, who was writing musical theater songs about that kind of environmental disaster, like Jonathan was. He was so ahead of his time in so many ways and was writing about such important things. Um, it's just incredible. I just thank you all for being here. Thank you for supporting this, the Jonathan Larson Project, um, for coming to Barnes Noble. Uh, thank you, before I leave the stage, to Steven Sorrentino for putting this together, and to Chris <laughs> booklet and we don't get those anymore so it's really a rare thing and really special um, and here is George Salazar <laughs> through the 
billion sounds from the half frozen animals